Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Taking a look outside with live cam. You see some of those clouds lingering. I had some rain overnight. Will we see more rain today? Mike Osterhage is in for Sarah Spivey and will let us know in just a bit. Good morning. Good morning, it is San Antonio. September, September 4th. Am it I is. am I right on that? September 4th. And 73 degrees at 6 a.m. We have Jonathan Cotto in the house again. So That's good to right. see you. Likewise, Sarah. Always a pleasure. And we have another starring guest, oh, yes. Mike Osterhage. Yes, the B team is in here this morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you step outside this morning, going to church, something like that. You probably won't run into any rain. There's okay, lots so of no raincoat down to the south, but it is humid out there. I mean, we got a ton of humidity as of right now, and uh, still a couple of showers, like I said, well down to the uh, south. But this is all kind of some uh, some cluttery stuff showing up here. It's not really any uh, showers. Those are all confined well down there to the uh, the south right now. We'll see sort of a, a break in the action as we go on in through the rest of the morning other than those few showers down to the south and then more going to be trying to pop up later on this afternoon 73 degrees right now low 70s and the uh, <laughs> one thing though it is bless you Sarah uh, one thing it's pretty humid out there thanks to a lot of the moisture in the ground and it, that's going to help out uh, helping to keep temperatures down also we're going to keep a lot of clouds around here today so that's going to uh, help to keep temperatures down mold is on the high side fall elm is low and throughout the rest of today we are going to be up to 82 degrees maybe a couple of showers again still left over just down to the south and then like I said breaking the action 82 then we get up to 88 for a high temperature one or two of those uh, shower storms out there I don't think we're going to be seeing a repeat of yesterday although if you do get one of the storms could have a decent downpour here, but they will be more uh, kind of scattered about if you were a little bit further between so outdoor plans today outdoor plans tomorrow not bad. Just kind of keep an eye out here and there. Rest of the uh, first full week of September forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating an overnight shooting outside of a bar. This happening on the city's south side. SAPD says a man was shot twice outside of Thirsty's after a fight in the parking lot. The suspects got away, but the victim was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. A second person was also shot and taken by friends to Mission Trails Hospital. They're also expected to be okay. And new this morning, a man is facing charges after police say he robbed and hit a DoorDash driver, causing him to lose consciousness. This is 21-year-old Christopher Gold. According to an arrest affidavit, Gold got into a verbal argument with the victim who had just picked up a DoorDash order. This all happening back in June. Gold is accused of assaulting the victim, causing him to black out. The victim then woke up to being choked by Gold, causing him to lose consciousness again. The suspect then left the location with a female in a vehicle and leaned out to take the victim's phone. Now Gold faces a couple charges, including aggravated robbery. Now to a story we've been following closely this morning. We're getting a look at the driver accused of using a flatbed trailer as a battering ram on the highway. Just take a look. This is 30 year old Yudi Agulad is facing several charges. Sheriff Javier Salazar says Agulad was encouraged to turn himself in by his co-workers. Deputies say it all started as a road rage situation. The victim was able to take a picture of the truck before it got away and is now suffering from a shattered leg. Well, today is the last day of Uvalde's Palomino Festival and Rodeo. That's right. It's also the last big event before Uvalde students head back to class this Tuesday. The county fairplex was filled with carnival rides, food, and rodeo fun. This year's event had a special theme of Uvalde Strong. Now, Saturday started with a parade where the families of the 21 rob victims made a special float with their loved ones' names and faces proudly displayed. Well, the board organizing Palomino Fest debated putting on the festival, but cited for it because they could use the weekend to honor those who were killed and donate to those who were hurt. We decided that the $25,000, instead of going to the scholarships, it's going to go to the families of the uh, students that were injured. Tonight is the final night of Palomino Fest. Gates open at 5 p.m. There will be a special tribute to the 21 rob victims during the Los Palominos performance at 9 p.m. And on the night beat, we are taking a look back to a walkout that happened at Uvalde CISD in the 70s. I'm hoping that, that we can develop something that's going to be more permanent than what we did back in the 70s. 
even though, like I said, <clears throat> I'm not complaining, and I think we did wonderful back in the 70s with what we had and for what, what we were doing. But I, I think we can do a much better job today. Abelardo Castillo is the only living non-student organizer of the walkout. He's been contacted by families and the community to help organize another movement. We'll have that story tonight on the Night Beat at 10. And other stories we're following this morning, the FAA and the Department of Homeland Security will be tightening up security at a small airports or small airports after an airport worker in Mississippi allegedly stole a small airplane. That's right. It led to some terrifying moments for people in the area. ABC's Christine Sloan has a story. We had what you would think would be the best case scenario. People in Mississippi are breathing a sigh of relief after a dangerous situation. Investigators say 29-year-old Corey Wayne Patterson stole a plane early Saturday morning from Tupelo Airport and threatened to crash it into a local Walmart on purpose. Patterson from the aircraft calls Lee County 911 to tell them that he is going to crash this aircraft into the West Main Walmart. Tupelo Police Department and Fire Department evacuated West Main Walmart and Tupelo and all the surrounding areas. Police say negotiators were able to talk to Patterson while he was in the air and convinced him to back off his threat. After the initial threat, uh, he did not want to hurt himself or, or anyone else, and I believe that... Tracking data from FlightRadar24.com shows the plane's erratic route over northern Mississippi as the pilot zigzagged over several hours. The aircraft began running out of fuel around 9.30 a.m. That's when the suspect posted what investigators are calling a goodbye message. But the plane eventually landed in a field in Ripley, Mississippi, about 45 miles northwest of Tupelo, where the suspect was taken into custody. We jumped on our um, side by side to go see if we could help and that's when we saw the pilot come out of the plane um, and two police officers were already there waiting. He is being charged with grand larceny and making terroristic threats. FAA records show Patterson had a student pilot certificate issued in 2013. Investigators say he worked for a company at Tupelo Airport fueling aircraft. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. Wow, interesting story there, Sarah. Well, 607, 73 degrees. Well, after the break, we go behind the kitchen door at one of the malls in San Antonio. What the health inspector found, uh-oh, under the kitchen sink. Yikes. And a new month is here. After the break, we'll tell you the best deals to find from new grills to mattresses to summer clothing during the month of September. Oh my gosh, I was at Lowe's yesterday and I could see them bringing out all the Halloween stuff, <laughs> all the deals. Bring them out. Bring them out. I'm ready for fall. All right, 608. It doesn't feel like fall at all. It probably won't for a while. 73 degrees, another muggy morning. Mike Osterhage is in for Sarah Spivey. He'll let us know about our Sunday forecast when we come back. Folks, from clothes to mattresses, a wide variety of items are on sale this month. There's lots of places you can find savings in September. And the sales are already underway with a number of retailers discounting items for Labor Day specials. Oh, I saw the signs and the price <laughs> tags out yesterday. So you should be able to find steep markdowns on things like mattresses over the holiday weekend. It was weird how that person was kind of stroking the mattress. All right, last year Labor Day saw 30% off deals from Amersleep and Nectar and Tempur-Pedic. Oh, those are expensive. Took off as much as $700 on some of the adjustable mattress sets. Also watch for sales on large appliances around Labor Day. Lowe's and Home Depot are good places to check, as is Best Buy. That's one of my favorites. Look for those marked down grills. Last year, Lowe's had a three burner model selling for just $99. It's a good deal, and summer clothing will be discounted as we get into September. Deal News says look for women's apparel to be discounted by at least 50% and check the children's place for savings on kids clothing. If you're still doing back to school shopping, you should be able to find deals from Amazon, Staples and other retailers. I was at Dillard's this week and 65% off sale on almost all summer clothing. You're welcome. I found a lot of dresses. <laughs> Big summer blowout. Yeah, yeah. You know, another <laughs> great place to shop and a lot of people I know do this. Um, Goodwill. 
Because a lot of times, especially for kids' clothing, um, when, you know, the kids grow out of it before you can even sometimes wear it, yeah. and there's brand new stuff there with the with, tag still exactly, on. Exactly. And it's exactly. for, yeah, for pennies. So that's always a great place to go. So, all right, uh, Labor Day weekend, the unofficial end of summer, and it still feels like summer out there with all the humidity, but boy, oh boy, we ain't going to be hitting 100, so that is the good news. Here's a look at some of the beautiful rain that we had yesterday. A lot of folks picked up a ton of rain. Here's a good, what is that, inch and a half over there in Westover Hills area, especially on the north and west sides of town as some of those storms moved on through. I'm going to show you that in just a second. Pretty nice start, but uh, what you can't see is all the humidity out there. This, as I mentioned, is all kind of uh, just some sort of clutter around the area. And then we do still have some of the showers down here to the south saw that box that popped up that green box that was the uh, flash flood warning that was in effect it did expire at the top of the hour these will continue to sort of work their way off to the east so still um, LaSalle McMullen County is right around Live Oak Beeville Bee County a couple of these leftover showers that's pretty much it it looks like there may be one right here in extreme southeastern Atascosa County again that's uh, pretty much it as of right now uh, we'll see sort of a break in the action and then we'll have a couple more showers uh, firing up later on this afternoon. So here's the radar estimates from rainfall, <coughs> excuse me, over the past 24 hours, basically taking into account uh, what popped up yesterday afternoon and last night. A lot of heavy stuff well down here to the south and then this stretch. And this is good news, too, because this is uh, in portions of the recharge zone up there in the hill country. But you look at right around La Prior, three and a half, almost four inches of rain. And then there were a couple of um, two, three inch rain amounts, 3.2 inches down there right around Cuero. And there is that band from San Marcos all the way over in toward eastern Kerr County one, two, three inches of rain and that couple of bullseye spots up there along 1604 right around, uh, say, Hollywood Park, Chavano Park area, just over three inches of rain and closer to downtown wasn't quite as much. Picked up almost an inch yesterday out there at the airport, which is always just beautiful to see. 20% chance for a couple of these showers hanging around here this morning just to take into account the leftovers and, you know, one or two down to the south. Then later on this afternoon, going to up the rain chances to roughly 30%. So it's going to be few and far between out there. We're going to make it to 88 for a high temperature today, which is five below normal. That's nice to say. Here's the uh, computer model. Again, the leftover rain down here to the south. We get somewhat of the break in the action, and then by later on this afternoon, we'll start to see one or two of those popping up here and there. Most of us aren't going to be seeing rain today, so if you do have some outdoor plans today as well as tomorrow, about the same situation. Um, just kind of keep an eye out for things, but it'll be sort of few and far between. Although if one or two of those thunderstorms do pop up, like was the case yesterday, you can get brief heavy downpour around here, and I don't think anybody's really going to complain about that. But again, a lot of computer models aren't really bullish on the coverage of any rain. About the same situation, like I said, tomorrow, uh, just one or two of those showers that are going to be popping up around the area. Then after that, rain is going to be rain chances kind of slim to none the rest of the week and we'll be staying in the low and then getting in toward the, uh, the mid 90s. More on that in just a second. 82 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Again, a leftover shower or two around here this morning and then later on today, 88 for a high temperature. Just a couple of showers and thunderstorms scattered about here and there. Then next uh, seven days tomorrow we have for the unofficial end of summer, 30% chance for a, a shower or two here or there. Another little impulse moves through on Wednesday. So that's a small chance for some rain. Low 90s getting up toward the mid 90s toward the end of the week with sort of mixture sunshine clouds and leaning more toward a bit more sunshine. But no hundreds as we go into the first week of September. That's nice because tomorrow is the anniversary. Hottest day ever here in town. 111. 111. Wow. Yeah. I'm so, I'm enjoying these, like yesterday, my husband was, was like, oh, is there a cool front coming out? I was like, no, that's just the rain, and it, yeah. it felt it felt so nice outside. Yeah, we did hit 93, and then had some of those gust front moves on, yeah. move on through, so that, you know, knocks temperatures down, nice and breezy. Late uh, yesterday afternoon, evening, it was very nice sitting outside. Very pleasant. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Time is 617, temperature is 73 degrees. All right, a mall food court vendor in San Antonio shut down. Why the health inspector suspended their license? Taking a look at these lottery numbers, pick three, two, seven, five, fireball three, daily four, zero, six, six, eight, fireball six.
Cash five, those numbers are 7, 16, 25, 30, 34. And your Texas lotto numbers are 4, 24, 25, 33, 34, and 50. Powerball 18, 27, 49, 65, 69. Powerball 9, Power Play 2. Good luck, I know it's almost a 200 million. Welcome back. A South Park Mall food vendor shut down because of a roach infestation. Yikes, and a popular Riverwalk bar was also plagued by pests. That's what Tim Gerber found when he went behind the kitchen door. This week's top offender is located inside the South Park Mall Food Court. A health inspector suspended pretzel maker's license on July 27th due to unsanitary conditions and a roach infestation. Live roaches were found under sinks, inside the ice machine, and behind boxes. Dead roaches were found inside cabinets and in front of the soda machine. There was also a fly ribbon above the food prep area, and the inside of the ice machine was soiled with a mold-like residue. Their score? In 81. The snack shop was back in business when I stopped by this week. When did you all reopen? Because it had to be shut down for a while? Uh, According to follow-up reports, the inspector reinstated pretzel maker's license on July 29th, but he still found live roaches. The inspector returned on August 10th and 25th for reinspections. The roach problem appears to be resolved and the business has corrected several other violations. <laughs> roaches are a common sight on the Riverwalk, but you don't expect them to be crawling around where you eat and drink. The Esquire Tavern downtown earned an 84 despite having a roach problem. The inspector noted numerous live and crawling roaches throughout the establishment, including some that were creeping across the main countertop and under a mat used for clean glasses. The manager stated they received pest control services but failed to provide any invoices. There was also exposed cooked meat in a cooler under a dirty cooler fan, a buildup of grease on vent hoods, and a moldy sludge on the sliding door tracks of bar coolers and in cold hold units. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Okay, so want to know which restaurants have good or bad scores? Take out your phone right now and scan this QR code that you see on your screen that will take you to a new mapping tool and you can see all the scores for local food businesses. The reports go back six months and are frequent, frequently updated. Can we play that QR code again? I need to scan it. Make okay. sure that... KSAT.com. <laughs> we'll find it. That's right. The time is 623, 73 degrees outside. All right, after the break, a look at some of the stories that are trending also on KSAT.com. Well, San Antonio Pets Alive is offering discounts to anyone who wants to become new owners of a big dog this weekend. Let me tell you, I'm a big, I have two big dogs and they are so special. So their special is called We Like Big Mutts and they are offering $10 adoptions for any dog weighing more than 35 pounds. This will take place at all San Antonio Pet Alive locations. I know a big dog can seem daunting, but they're so worth it and so sweet. To find out more on where the locations are, you can visit our website. This fall, the San Antonio Zoo wants you to check out the first ever Zoo Fest. It's happening at the Sunken Garden Theater on Saturday, October 22nd. Guests can expect music, dancing, food, drinks, VIP experiences, and admission to the San Antonio Zoo. We have more information about both these stories on our website, ksat.com. Excited about Zoo Fest. All right. 60, uh, 73 degrees at 627. The Artemis launch stopped once again. This time, the problems causing the delay of the launch most likely won't be fixed to launch this year. Still ahead, how one festival is honoring the lives and families of the victims taken in the Robb Elementary School shooting. We'll have details about that festival. Good morning, San Antonio. It's 6.30 on this beautiful Sunday. We got a little bit of rain. I definitely enjoyed it. I know your garden did as well, Sarah. I know. It's actually outside. So um, I have these milkweed seeds that I'm planting right now for the butterflies. Um, but I really enjoyed it because I put all my seeds down and packed them with compost. And then I literally stepped inside to get something and it was raining. I was like, yeah. oh, I don't It was have such to. a nice sight. It but was really nice, Mike. So do oh, we that's know? That's great um, timing. 
how much how much rain we collected in our area out there at the airport picked up uh, just over nine tenths of an inch. Some areas, especially up around 1604, where with those huge storms that moved in right around dinner time, uh, anywhere from two three inches of rain. And boy, they were it was just coming down in buckets. We'll still have a couple of more showers around here uh, later on today, but it's going to be a little further fewer and further between than what we had yesterday. Here's what's going on on radar as of right now, and you can see this is just a little bit of uh, well, sort of some clutterish type stuff there. The only showers are well down to the south, and those are going to continue to sort of fizzle on out. Down around uh, McMullen, LaSalle counties, there's still a, a fairly decent uh, downpour down there around Cotula. There was a flash flood warning earlier this morning that expired about a half an hour ago. Temperature stands at 73 degrees, 74 Stinson, and even some upper 60s parts of the hill country, 73 being the normal high. Uh, by the way, here's one of those gee whiz things yesterday. High temperature was 93, low temperature was 73. Those are the normals this time of year, so it's just one of those because usually don't hit normal. It's the average temperature. Anyway, uh, dew point stands at 72, so it is fairly humid out there. And like yesterday in the past couple of days, the humidity is going to be sticking around in the afternoon, so it will definitely be a sultry day. Mold is on the high side. Fall elm is low. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out a little bit later on this morning. So a couple leftover showers down to the south primarily. It is definitely humid and then one or two showers, a couple of storms later on today. 30% chance for some rain and I think there'll be fewer and further between even than what we had yesterday. Still going to be very humid, upper 80s, so plenty of clouds to keep temperatures down somewhat. And then a stray shower tomorrow right around 90. If you have outdoor plans today or tomorrow, other than battling the humidity, I, I think it's going to go off without a hitch. Just kind of keep an eye out if one or two of those showers you uh, you know hit the jackpot as far as getting more rain. But then as the week rolls on, little to no rain. Rain chance is really going to be going down except for maybe Wednesday. Temperatures in the low 90s. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. We have learned the name of a man found stabbed to death last Friday. The Bear County's medical examiner identifying him as 62-year-old Victor Ochoa. He was found at the, at the home on Inglewood Drive near West Avenue and I-10. San Antonio police say the suspect, who was still inside the home, called 911. That suspect told dispatchers that he hurt someone before hanging up and calling again several more times. That suspect has now been charged with murder. And this morning, the search continues for a woman who was last seen over four months ago. Jordan Tompkins is one of three people that has not been seen in the Lake Hills area. That's just outside of Medina Lake. She was last seen wearing a black top and pink shoes, leaving the Medina Lake Country Club back in April. Call the Bandera Sheriff's Office if you have any information about where she might be. And now to Uvalde, where the community is trying to find ways to move forward. This weekend, families there have had a chance to enjoy the last weekend of summer with the annual Palomino Fest at the County Fairplex. Lee Waldman shows us how this year's celebration has a special theme. Go Palomino Fest! What kind of balloon do you want? I want a Despite the rain, there was still plenty of excitement for Saturday's Palomino Fest. From the first timers, probably just like to watch the show on the rodeo or something. Watch show on the rodeo? What about you? Uh, the rodeo. To those who have come before, we're all just here trying to can't say move on because the pain is still going to be there, but to enjoy what little we can. This year's festival feels a little different. The theme for Palomino Fest this year is uh, Uvalde Strong. This morning, families of the 21 victims took part in the festival's parade, showing the faces and the names of the ones taken on May 24th. Ismael Martinez is one of the organizers of Palomino Fest. He says COVID canceled things for the past few years. This year, plans were set early for the Labor Day weekend celebration. That was all good, and then May 24th comes, and it, and it, brought everything to a halt. The board debated putting on the festival, but decided for it because they could use the weekend to honor those who were killed and donate to those who were hurt. We decided that the $25,000, instead of going to the scholarships, it's going to go to the families of the uh, students that were injured. This weekend of fun serving as a moment of joy for a community still saturated in sadness. We can, even though the pain's still there, we can still enjoy what little life there is because life's short. You never know what can happen. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. 
Well, tonight is the final night of Palomino Fest. Gates open at 5 p.m. There will be a special tribute to the 21 rob victims during the Los, Los Palominos performance at 9 p.m. We have more information on that right now on KSAT.com. And a Texas high school football player is dead after suffering a head injury during a game. It happened Thursday night. The team played for Dale Hart or Dale Hart High School. He was hurt during a game against a school in Dimmit. That's near Amarillo in, Pan in the Panhandle. He lost consciousness during a junior varsity game and trainers and first responders were not able to revive him. The district canceled extracurricular activities for this weekend. Student loan service companies are being overwhelmed with refund requests after President Biden's forgiveness program. Despite the pandemic pause, many borrowers, borrowers continue to make student loan payments and are wondering if they can get that money back. The answer for many is yes. So while most of the 42 million people covered by the pause did not make payments, about 9 million still made payments. It's not clear yet how much of the Education Department's $1.6 trillion portfolio of loans will be affected yet, but many borrowers should be able to get refunds of up to $10,000 in federal student loan debt. Now, this is an event we've been following closely. Another disappointment for NASA's new Artemis moon rocket after a liquid hydrogen leak scrubbed another launch. Yeah, we were following it yesterday on social media and crews scrambled to fix the issue, but were ultimately unsuccessful. CNN's Kristen Fisher has the latest. A second scrub, a second hydrogen leak, but this leak was much bigger than the one that NASA encountered on Monday. So now NASA needs to fix it, and they have two options. They can either fix it on the launch pad, or they can roll the entire rocket all the way back to the VAB, or the Vehicle Assembly Building. But to do that would take about three and a half days. It eats up a ton of time. But regardless of where they make the repairs, as of now, NASA is going to need to roll the rocket back to the VAB regardless because they are in the middle or about to be in the middle of a safety violation with the range. We don't go into these tests lightly, right? We, we don't just say, hey, we think, we hope this is going to work. Um, the confident, confidence to do another launch attempt today was born out of the fact that uh, we understood the hydrogen leaks that we had on, on Monday. Those are different than the leak that we had today um, in, in terms of scale. One was in the, the same place, but today was a different signature. Um, and we, we understood the engine issue. So we were confident coming into today. But as the administrator said, we're not going to launch till we're ready. So while this is a disappointment and a delay, NASA is confident that at some point, it's Artemis moon rocket more than a decade in the making is finally going to get off this launch pad. The question is when. Kristen Fisher for CNN at the Kennedy Space Center. Well, the Labor Day weekend, the Texas Department of Public Safety is encouraging everyone to drive safely. And as people celebrate the unofficial end of summer over this weekend, we have some safety tips from DPS to reduce the number of crashes going into Monday. The Texas Highway Patrol has increased enforcement through tomorrow and are looking for those not wearing their seatbelts, speeders, and people driving under the influence. Some tips from DPS, don't drink and drive. And make sure you plan ahead by getting an Uber or knowing that you'll have someone to drive you if you're drinking. Slow down during bad weather. Make sure you're wearing a seatbelt and most importantly, know the route you are taking before beginning the trip. And just a reminder, tomorrow is Labor Day and City Hall and most municipal offices will be closed. That's right. Public safety and emergency services will be open and trash and recycling will be collected on Tuesday. All right, it's 640 and 73 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, free flu shots. Health officials are expecting more cases this flu season. We'll tell you where you can get your free shot and when. And like Mike said, some parts of San Antonio got some pretty good rain yesterday. We'll show you what some of our viewers saw in their backyards. And taking a look outside beautiful San Antonio, we're just waiting for the sun to make its appearance at 641, 73 degrees. Mike said earlier that some parts of our viewing area had up to two to three inches of rain. Uh, so, some, some, so some people saw some good soaking downpours last night. 
And lots of you guys sent in great videos and pictures of the storm, and you can share those through our KSAT 12 Weather Connect app or online. Um, I know you live near the downtown area. Yes. What did you guys see? Oh, the, the rain was lovely. As soon as I found out it was raining outside, I opened up the windows yeah. and really just enjoyed it. Uh, my plants were on the windowsill, so I opened up. They enjoyed that humidity and a little bit of splash. It was you nice. Know, and, and it was interesting because there were a lot of... Um, as we call them outflow boundaries, little mini cold fronts, if you will, that were being generated by these storms. And that one that moved through then right around dinner time, you know, it was a little bit on the, the human side. Then all of a sudden that thing moved through. It was very breezy, but boy, that knocked temperatures down quickly, um, got rid of a little bit of the humidity. And then on the north side, the west side of town picked up, like you were talking about, one, two, three inches wow. of rain. Yeah, in some cases a little too much, but um, it's it's great to see. And all those pictures you were talking about, Senator, how many times were we just seeing pictures of 100 degree thermometers <laughs> throughout most of the summer? And now we're getting some beautiful uh, rain gauge pictures. And I got one more to show you coming up in just a moment. 73 right now, two point stands at 72, which means, yeah, there's plenty of humidity. Humidity, relative humidity is at 96%. And when you have dew points that high, that means it's pretty darn humid when you step outside. We'll get a high temperature today up to 88. So we will be five below normal. No complaints there, thanks to a lot of the uh, the cloud cover out there. The aquifer uh, went up five tenths of a foot, half foot yesterday, and a lot more rain fell in the recharge zone yesterday as well. So the updated count is going to be coming out, obviously, later on today. Mold is on the high side. Fall Elm is low. And... Uh, Another rain gauge. Look at that one. It registered 1.09 inches, which is absolutely beautiful. And again, that was kind of a uh, well, sort of middle of the road, if you will, or, or even on the low end of things out at the airport officially picked up uh, nine tenths of an inch of rain. But like I said, there were spots that picked up uh, as much as three inches of rain right there, uh, just around 1604 in the uh, Chavanel Park, Hollywood Park area. As of right now, we've got uh, still some of these showers down around Catula, Laredo. They are all sort of uh, drifting off to the east a little bit, maybe a couple of more there in northern uh, Live Oak County. And uh, that's pretty much about it as of right now. Right now, just a couple of leftover showers there and then one or two of these here, which are still still wanting to brew down there uh, just to the east of Catula, sort of around the uh, LaSalle uh, McMullen County line. So throughout the rest of the morning, 20 percent chance for some rain, just taking into account what's left over down to the south. Temperatures will stay in the mid 70s this morning. If you're heading off to uh, church, this, it's going to be uh, on the humid side, definitely. And then Still a stray shower left over down to the south. Then we get into the afternoon hours and we'll have, I think, leaning more toward the cloudier side, which is going to help to keep temperatures down in the upper 80s and that 30% chance for some rain. So if you want to uh, head out to a park today, if you want to head to the pool, something today, tomorrow, odds are in your favor that you're not going to be seeing rain. So that's some, some good news. But I mean, hey, if it does rain, that's fantastic as well. One thing, though, as far as the humidity, it is definitely going to be sticking around today. So with the two points in the low 70s right now, and they'll be sticking into the uh, upper 60s, low 70s. So it is definitely going to be a sultry afternoon. Now, as far as any more rain chances, like I said, we've got that small chance uh, later on today. Tomorrow, one or two of those showers out there, perhaps one or two on Tuesday. But and then Wednesday would be the next okay chance for some rain. Not great. Then latter portion of the week and pretty much uh, you can take rain chances just about out of the picture as we go in toward the end of the week and going in toward next week and temperatures will start to creep up a little bit more as well. 82 at noon. Most of the cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 88 today. Few showers, one or two uh, storms out there. Seems so funny to say high temperature only in the 80s. After saying 100 all summer long, 90 uh, tomorrow, 30% chance for a stray shower or two. Again, if you you know want to get outside today, other than the humidity, it's going to be uh, pretty rain free. Just one or two of those here or there. Just be on the lookout for that. And then mid 90s by the end of next week and going in toward next weekend. So degree or two above normal sunshine. So no need to cancel outdoor plans if you're doing stuff for the holiday. No, just just be on the lookout for yeah. one or two of those showers popping up here. So awesome. thank, thank you, Mike. You, Mike. Mm -hmm. Plan accordingly. There you go. There's the weather forecast. It's 649, 73 degrees. It's Hunger Action Month. Coming up, we'll tell you how you can help and what foods are most recommended to be donated to the San Antonio Food Bank. Taking, Taking a, a look, look outside live with Transguide. I don't know what that flashing light was. Maybe a construction 
sign out there, but roads seem to be pretty empty, smooth outside. Uh, we'll let you know if any incidents pop up. That's right. Your pick three numbers are two, seven, five, and three. Daily four. Those numbers are zero, six, six, eight, and six. Cash five, seven, seven, sixteen, twenty-five, thirty, thirty-four. Texas Lotto four, twenty-four, twenty-five. 33, 34, 50. Let's take a look at Powerball, almost 200 million. 18, 27, 49, 65, 69, Powerball 9, Power Play 2. Good luck. All right, September is Hunger Action Month, and the San Antonio Food Bank has its hands full, trying to get more and more stomachs full. That's right, and with inflation and rising food and fuel costs, not only are local families hurting more financially, but the food bank's mission has become that much more expensive. Absolutely. I mean, I, when we go grocery shopping, we can definitely see it in our bills. Oh, yeah. So the good news is that you can help. Just take out your phone right now, scan this QR code on your screen. It'll take you straight to ksat.com. We have a list of the 12 most wanted food items at the food bank and RBFCU are collecting. You'll also find details on where you can drop off any donations throughout the month of September. There are more than 25 don locations. That's right. This month, University Health and Bear County are teaming up to offer free flu shots during drive through clinics. The drive through clinics start this month through October. The shots will be offered to anyone six months and older, and you can register in advance. It is required to actually register in advance. Health officials say although flu cases have been down in the last two years, that may not be the case this year as more people are starting to gather and be around large crowds. I know uh, people aren't wearing masks as much as they were right. during the pandemic. So if anyone is interested in getting a flu shot, it's required to register online. The first clinic will be Saturday, September 10th from 8 to noon at the Dub Ferris Athletic Complex, which is located at 8400 North Loop 1604. The second clinic will be on Saturday, September 24th. And like we mentioned, these will be throughout October. You can visit the website to check out those later dates. That's right. We know the holidays are coming. A lot of uh, family gatherings, so it's always going to be on the safe side. All right, 655 and 73 degrees. Now here's a look at what's coming up next on Good Morning America. A good Sunday morning coming up here on GMA. Millions in the West under extreme heat alerts this holiday weekend. Plus the latest on those dangerous wildfires in parts of California, forcing thousands to flee and destroying homes. How city officials say it started. Also coming up, new developments in the search for the suspected kidnapping victim, the woman who disappeared while on a morning jog Friday, the potential evidence police found, and who they now have detained. And finally, why NASA is halting its Artemis 1 launch again, plus the next possible new window for that historic launch back to the moon. It's all coming up here on GMA. All right, got a lot of clouds hanging around here. One or two little uh, holes right there. As you can see, a little bit further up to the uh, north. They're going to keep plenty of clouds around today, and that's going to help to keep temperatures down. That's just a little bit of uh, kind of a lot of that green around the area, a little bit of kind of cluttery stuff. Some showers down to the south, uh, one or two of them. Even going down uh, 35 in toward Frio County, got a couple of those leftover showers. So just one or two of them primarily south this morning, 73 degrees out there at the airport. Stinson, Pleasanton, 74, and uh, even Bernie State at 68 right now. A lot of humidity though. 88 high temperature. One or two of those showers, thunderstorms kind of cropping up around here. If you got some outdoor activities today as well as tomorrow, wouldn't really worry about it. Just kind of keep an eye out. Keep that weather app handy. Keep watching the radar in case one or two of those pop up. And then rest of the week, other than Wednesday, pretty much slim to none as far as rain chances and temperatures will stay in the low close to mid 90s, which is slightly above normal, but uh, no hundreds. Yay. I, <laughs> I can love celebrate that. that for sure. I <laughs> definitely, oh, yes. I love that. It all kind of feels like fallish. Kind of. That's kind of pushing it, but <laughs> we're all ready hey, for it. We're ready for Thank you guys points. for joining us. We'll see you again at 8 a.m. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning on GMSA, a parking lot fight at a south side bar ends in a shooting. What police are saying about the victims? Plus, as we return to class, school safety is on everyone's mind this morning. We'll share how law enforcement is getting ready to respond in future situations. 
Sure did enjoy some rain yesterday. Right now, 8 a.m., 73 degrees. Mike Osterhage is in for Sarah Spivey. What can we expect this Sunday? He'll let us know in just a bit. But first, good morning. It's 8 o'clock Sunday, September 4th, and we have Jonathan Cotto That's back right. again. I'm happy to be here, San Antonio. And, you know, I have to say I really enjoyed the rain. It was a lovely experience. It Windows was, were up. It was a nice, like, let's sit on the porch. Uh, right before coffee, maybe have, yes. uh, right, right before dinner, have a cup of coffee. Oh, or yeah, it was wonderful. I glass enjoyed of it. Wine. Mark, uh, Mike, did you see any rain in your neighborhood? Yes, I, I did. The heavy stuff, because watching that, you know, that, that gust front, that outflow boundary, we started moving through right around dinner time, late afternoon, and really knocked some of the humidity on, dropped temperatures on, because it was pretty sultry yesterday. We did make it up to 93. And then the really, really heavy rain stayed up there on the north side, but a little bit closer to downtown. Yes, we did see some rain. And officially out there at the airport, picked up just shy of an inch, a uh, little more than nine tenths of an inch, but uh, some folks over there right around 1604 um, Northwest Military Highway, Chavano Park area, some radar estimates more than three inches of rain, which was absolutely beautiful. 73 degrees uh, as of right now. We have bottomed out at 73 this morning, and as you can see, do have some clouds hanging around here, and that's going to continue to be the case throughout the rest of the day. A lot of clouds uh, and 88 for a high temperature, which is five degrees below normal. Now, we are still going to have plenty of humidity out there, though. The aquifer went up half a foot yesterday. Beautiful news there and a lot of rain yesterday fell in the recharge zone so that aquifer should continue to go up. Molds on the high side and fall elm is low. So as far as radar right now, as you can see, we do have still a couple of these uh, showers well down there to the south. They've been holding in there fairly tough. That uh, area of rain was a lot more pronounced, a lot more widespread earlier this morning. And a lot of the, the more widespread stuff has sort of uh, fizzled on out. But as you can see, we still right around uh, Catula right there. We still got a uh, fairly decent amount of rain. It almost looks like this is wanting to sit still. So just to the northwest of Catula, east of or northeast of Catula, east of Dilly, you want to watch it as these are almost sort of sitting in one spot. That's the problem when you have these decent downpours and they don't move all that quickly and we get a little bit of uh, some low, low, low level flooding or low lying areas and some flooding there and that's the same situation there in southern Atascosa County. A couple of those showers. So down here to the south, watch out for some of this rain. Elsewhere, further up to the north, we don't have anything. A couple of uh, sprinkly showers there in Zavala County. So that's what taking into account 20% chance of uh, a shower around this morning. Those down to the south, low 70s, even some upper 60s in parts of the hill country, and we're going to make it up to 82 at noon. Mostly cloudy skies, and like I said, keep a fair amount of clouds around today. 88 for a high temperature, 30% chance for a few showers, a thunderstorm or two. Most of us aren't going to see any rain today, so if you have outdoor plans, I wouldn't change them. Just kind of, you know, keep the weather app handy and check out radar because one or two will pop up here and there. About the same situation tomorrow as well. We'll take a look ahead to the first full week of September, the unofficial end of summer tomorrow. It's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating an overnight shooting outside a bar on the city's south side. SAPD says a man was shot twice outside of Thirsty's after a fight in the parking lot broke out. The suspects got away, but the victim was taken to the hospital and police say that person is expected to be OK. Now, a second person was also shot, but taken by friends to Mission Trails Hospital. That person also expected to be OK. And we have now learned the name of a man who was killed in a stabbing last Friday, and the suspect is facing charges. The Bear County Medical Examiner says 62-year-old Victor Ochoa was the man found at a home on Inglewood Drive near West Avenue and I-10. Police say the suspect, who was still inside the home, called 911. The man told dispatchers he heard someone before hanging up and calling again several more times. The suspect is now charged with murder. Well, in the aftermath of recent school shootings, safety is a major concern for parents, students, and communities everywhere. That's right. Those concerns are now in the spotlight here after the deadly school shooting in Uvalde. As the community continues to heal, students are preparing to return to class this Tuesday. School safety is a topic of our latest Solutionaries piece, and our, our GMSA Stephen Cavazos took part by showing us how one organization is preparing law enforcement to be ready to respond better to incidents like Uvalde. Just take a look. See those little faces on those crosses? It's, it's not right. 
this should not have been something that happened. I've never been scared like this before. If we don't change nothing, it's going to be the same and it's going to happen again and again. It's unbelievable and your mind instantly goes back to the kids that you know in your life. The ones that are supposed to be enjoying those last days of school, hanging out with their friends and laughing. And to know that they spent those last few moments of their life in terror, it's emotionally scarring. So many parents are, are just trying to come to terms with the news that they're hearing today. People really all over the country who have come here to pay their respects to the 21 victims of the Robb Elementary shooting. These are not just headlines. These are people's lives. These are lives that were lost that day. Whenever you have a situation like that that unfolds and when you see that delayed response, it's, it turns to anger and frustration. What you see is the typical re police response time is about three minutes. So that's lightning fast. You're not going to get any faster than that unless you're lucky and there just happens to be a police officer standing right there when it starts. Of course, the event doesn't end just because that first officer arrives on scene. And so that's the number we're talking about. From 911 call to first officer on scene is about three minutes. Obviously then the officer has to figure out where the attacker is, go find the attacker and stop the killing. So that can take longer than that. I'm Pete Blair, I'm the executive director of the Advanced Law Enforcement Rapid Response Training Center at Texas State University. We're currently out at our range facility uh, in Maxwell, Texas. We actually have a staff of researchers who are involved in looking at not only the events to find out what the patterns and trends are in the events, but also at specific techniques and tactics and how those work and comparing which ones work better than the others. And then we publish that in peer-reviewed journals. They heavily rely on that research to guide them in understanding these situations that happen and how to better prepare for that. Anytime we have a major attack, there's always an uptick in the number of requests, but our requests have gone up about tenfold uh, in the month following Uvalde and have continued on from there. Each kit is designed to allow the location that receives the kit to teach the entire course. So it's got all the equipment you need to teach our particular courses. We can either send our instructors out to the location and they teach the course themselves, or we also have a train the trainer program that's designed to have that agency develop their own trainers that can then provide that training. Each situation is not the same. They can only take what they learn from one situation and apply it to the next. You have to train them constantly. You have to equip them with the equipment that they need if they're going to perform on the day when the attack happens. It's not like just being a police officer gets you experience and all of a sudden you're this tactical genius who can handle these complex situations. So because you're not developing that practice and that skill on the job every day, you have to train to develop that skill so on those rare days that you do need it, you have that skill set in place. This is just one story that's part of our larger Solutionaries piece about school safety. The whole episode includes stories from our other sister stations in Houston, Detroit, Orlando, Jacksonville, and Roanoke. You can watch the entire piece right now on KSAT.com, on the KSAT Plus app, and on our Solutionaries YouTube channel. The time is 8.09 and it's 73 degrees. Still to come on GMSA with things like COVID and monkeypox flying around, it's easy to forget about getting your flu shot. So where can you find them for free? That's coming up before 8.30. Plus, it took three overtimes for Houston to escape San Antonio with a win over UTSA. We'll look at who the Roadrunners play next for a chance to earn their first win of the season. 73 degrees right now at 8.09. You can see some of those clouds hanging around. Will we see rain like we did yesterday evening? Mike will let us know when we come back.
This morning, UTSA has started off the season off on the wrong foot, but folks, there's no need to panic. So the reigning Conference USA champs, they fell, unfortunately, to number 24 Houston, but held their own game and almost pulled it off. So the Roadrunners unveiled their 2022 conference, 2021 conference championship banner in front of a huge crowd of over 37,000 fans packed in the dome. So of course it was loud. You could feel the energy all the entire game. UTSA led 21 to seven before Houston came back to tie the game up at 21 and the Cougars actually took the lead 24 21 with just 23 seconds left. UTSA got the ball back with no timeouts and got a field goal to force overtime tied at 24. The game went to triple overtime before Houston punched in a two point conversion, taking the lead 37 to 35. UTSA couldn't answer and Houston Cougars hang on to win in a thriller that's being called an instant classic. This one hurts so much as we, we know we belong and we didn't get it done. And that's on me. And uh, it, it wasn't our kids. Our kids were fantastic. There were just some big time moments against a really great team that you just can't make those kind of mistakes against. It's, it's part of the learning curve. It was a tough one to learn on because we, we really thought we played so great for so long. Coach Shutter wanted us to keep our head up. You know, he takes the blame, but I definitely take the blame myself. That last play, I forgot to send him in motion, so I definitely, it's hard on me right now. Um, we got to just come out there, you know, tomorrow, learn from everything, good, bad, and get ready for next week. So looking ahead, UTSA will play at Navy next Saturday at 11 a.m. And despite the loss, fans say they were just glad to see the Roadrunners back on the field, tailgating was definitely back in full swing ahead of the matchup. The big activities were hosted by the UTSA Alumni Association, which included food, drinks, giveaways, and a special appearance from Super Bowl, <coughs> Super Bowl MVP and San Antonio XFL head coach Heinz Ward. And I believe the weather for the most part, since they were tailgating earlier in the afternoon, might pipe probably just played nice for them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a tent set up there, so it was pretty humid to uh, tailgate yesterday, but uh, it was nice. That the, boy, that second touchdown that the UTSA got, I was watching mm -hmm. it a little bit, and when Harris, you know, kind of took, and then just, man, he's got some wheels on him. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, when he dove in for that, uh, that second touchdown, that was a fun game to watch. Just the start of the season, though. Yeah, that's right. Good Whole for them. Plus, ahead. now they had never beaten a top 25 team, and, you know, to first game of the season because usually well, maybe for Houston they were thinking it was one of those blow-off games but uh, you know that was a tough matchup on the first game of the season going against number 24 so good for them yeah, but, yeah it, was fun, it was fun game to watch so all right yeah there was uh, some rain out there uh, for some of the the tailgaters well the threat of rain and as you see in that picture boy it's an absolutely gorgeous shot there that K KSAC connect shot nice rain over there by SeaWorld and just got a, a note from one of our viewers down there they live right off of highway 541 at us goes uh, close to the Wilson County line. They picked up almost two inches of rain yesterday and they said they've had soaking rains for about two weeks now totaling 10 to 11 inches worth. Some folks have seen a whole bunch and this has just been literally a godsend. Thank you very much uh, for that KSAC Connect picture and the, the email that you sent. And a lot of clouds hanging around here right now. We're going to keep plenty around throughout the day, and so that's going to help to hold temperatures down. And then also a few more showers will be popping up. So in and around town, Nothing showing up on radar as of right now. This is just a little bit of a kind of some clutter around the area. But further on down to the south, right here, southern Atascosa, got a couple of these uh, showers. And then this batch of rain right here in yeah, the northeastern, uh, just to the southeast of Dilly and just to the east of Catula. That batch of rain is almost wanting to sit still. So you want to watch out for well, not only those heavy downpours, but when they don't move and it just continues to rain one on top of the other. So right there, uh, you want to watch out for maybe a little bit of uh, some flooding. And then further off to the west, we've got a couple of more showers there just to the uh, northwest of Crystal City. But again, this little spot right there just to the east of uh, uh, I-35, uh, excuse me, I-35 heading down to the, the southwest. You want to watch out for uh, some of that heavier rain there. And a few more showers, obviously, then going down 37 in toward Beeville. Now, as far as rainfall totals in the past 24 hours, some of the radar estimates, I mean, it has been well, some hefty downpours all scattered about the area. 
Off to the west, uh, just right around La Prior, almost four inches of rain, 3.7 to be exact. We had a lot of two, three inch rainfall amounts, at least the estimates on radar. This one band right here from roughly San Marcos over toward uh, eastern Kerr County. Again, inch and a half, two, three, almost four inches of rain in and or a little more than four inches of rain just to the east of Canyon Lake. And then in the uh, immediate vicinity, it was up there on the north side, right around Chavano Park, got the lion's share yesterday with those heavy storms. Storms have moved on through just over three inches of rain and even on the west side of town about an inch to inch and a half two inches there just about to around Castorville at the airport officially picked up uh, nine tenths of an inch or just a little bit more than nine tenths of an inch of rain so 20% chance for a couple of showers hanging around here today. Mm, you know, most of it's going to be that leftover stuff down there uh, to the south of us. And then 85 degrees today at uh, 2 o'clock, 88 for a high temperature today. And we'll have a slightly better chance for a few more showers and thunderstorms. I don't think they're going to be as widespread as yesterday. Just a couple of them popping up here and there. And then temperatures will continue to uh, drop down and rain chances will start to go away as then we go into the evening hours. Now, as far as the humidity... There's the problem that we are dealing with as far as keeping that around there. So it is going to be a very sultry afternoon, kind of like what it was yesterday. But again, with the humidity and the cloud cover, now that helps keep thermometer readings down. Of course, we will have somewhat of a heat index to deal with on top of that. And the humidity is going to be sticking around for the next uh, few days. So that'll be something, unfortunately, we have to deal with. But the nice thing is, at least some of that's getting squeezed out in the form of some rain. 82 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. So we'll have a couple of these sprinkly showers hanging around here this morning and then start to refire somewhat later on this afternoon. If you have outdoor plans, I would not change them. Um, just again, keep the app handy check out radar, see if any uh, showers are popping up in your area. 88 for a high temperature today with a couple of those showers and thunderstorms tomorrow. You know, pretty much the same situation. Uh, one or two of those showers here and there, 90 for a high temperature. Tuesday, 91 will start to kind of heat up a little bit more. Wednesday's going to be the next day with a slightly better chance for a few showers. You know, one or two pop ups here or there really can't totally be ruled out almost any day this week, but I don't even have it listed on there. And then we are going to start to warm up a bit more going in toward the weekend. I think more sunshine later on in the week as well, up to 95. So it's looking like a nice week. It will be on the drier side compared to last week. I can't believe I'm saying that after all this beautiful rain to then we get a chance to dry out just a little bit. But yeah, good looking forecast. I love Definitely it. Definitely is. Labor Day weekend, lots of folks hitting out the, the great outdoors. No need to cancel plans. No, no. Again, a couple of showers here or there. So right. they're just plan accordingly. Be mostly hit or miss. We'll just have to watch out down there, like I said, to the east of uh, Cthulhu this morning for some of those, those uh, showers and the heavier downpours just kind of sitting in one spot. And cooler temps compared to those triple nice. digits. So nice. we'll take it. Pumpkin Five spice latte. Below normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank We're you, exaggerating. <laughs> Time is 821, 73 degrees outside. All right, up next, don't look now, but flu season, it's approaching fast after the break where you can find free flu shots and what you need to do to get one. This month, University Health and Bear County are teaming up to offer free flu shots during drive through clinics. The drive through clinics start this month through October. The shots will be offered to anyone six months and older, but you will have to register in advance as it is required. Health officials say although flu cases have been down the last two years, that may not be the case this year as people are starting to gather and be around large crowds. So anyone interested in getting a flu shot is required to register online. The first clinic will be Saturday, September 10th from 8 to noon at the Dub Ferris Athletic Complex, which is located at 8400 North Loop 4, 1604. The second clinic will be on Saturday, September 24th. And like we mentioned, these are throughout October as well. So you can just visit our website to check out those later dates. That's right. Time is 826, 73 degrees outside. Still to come at 830, a bizarre story out of Mississippi involving a stolen plane, a threatening pilot, and a Walmart. We'll explain everything in your morning headlines. Plus, how one festival is honoring the lives and families of victims in Uvalde. Ahead of the return to class later this week. That's coming up next.
Good morning, San Antonio. I'm Jonathan Cotto. And I'm Sarah Costa. It's Sunday, September 4th. It's 830 and 73 degrees. Mike, it is humid yeah. and we did have some rain yesterday in the evening. Some places all up to three inches. Is that going to be the same story today? Well, there'll be fewer and further between as far as any uh, showers and thunderstorms later on this afternoon. You could have a decent downpour if you do happen to get one. If you got some outdoor plans later on today, I wouldn't change them at all because uh, we are going to be seeing, um, you know, just more of a, a scattered variety as far as any of these showers. So right now, as you can see, 73 uh, degrees out there at the airport. Dew point stand at 71 right now and we just got that little bit of a breeze there out of the uh, the northwest and a couple of showers are still falling right down there right around northeastern uh, LaSalle County, McMullen County and even a couple of them over there in uh, Zavala but these have sort of been kind of standing in sitting in one spot as you can see that little patch right there and as far as the rainfall rates that's what uh, you want to look at because it's coming down at a fairly good clip not anything just uh, really you know toad stranglers at all or anything like that or gully washers. However, um, are, it's given the fact that these things are just sort of sitting in one spot. So right here, we've got uh, rainfall rates coming down at about almost three inches per hour. And given the fact that these things are sitting in one spot, you are gonna get some uh, fairly, fairly decent rain associated with that. So do keep that in mind. Uh, down there in northeastern LaSalle County, but elsewhere, as far as radar is concerned, a little bit uh, further up to the north, there's really not much of anything showing up here in southern Atascosa, Atascosa County. Still have a couple of these showers, and this is all just a little bit of uh, some clutter around here. So later on this afternoon, a couple of more of these showers going to be popping up here and there. Not really, uh, again, a washout or anything, but just keep an eye on, on radar as you go through the day. If you have some outdoor plans, head to the pool, something like that, barbecuing outside. 73 degrees out there at the airport, some upper 60s in parts of the hill country. The aquifer, nice big jump yesterday, went up a little more than a foot and a half. Fantastic, 637, and molds on the high side. Still waiting for the update on that. I would imagine it's still going to be on the high side, given all the moisture in the ground. A little bit of fall elm is showing up. So a couple of showers, primarily south, humid. Stays humid all day long. A couple more showers, a thunderstorm here or there. And then tomorrow, about the same situation. Upper 80s today, 90 tomorrow. Lesser rain chances going on in through the rest of the week. Temperatures low and then approaching mid-90s toward the end of the week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, Comel ISD is investigating accusations of racist comments made during a Canyon High School volleyball game. These allegations come after a Friday night game between Canyon and Hayes High School. There are reports members of the Canyon student section made racist comments towards members of the Hayes High School volleyball team. The Comel ISD superintendent says they are investigating these allegations and if found to be true, those responsible will be disciplined. We will have more on this story throughout the day. Just stay with us and we'll have updates on KSAT.com. Also new this morning, a man is facing charges after police say he robbed and hit a DoorDash driver, causing him to lose consciousness. This is 21-year-old Christopher Gould. According to an arrest affidavit, Gould got into a verbal argument with the victim who had just picked up a DoorDash order. This all happening back in June. Gould is accused of assaulting the victim, causing him to black out. The victim then woke up to being choked by Gould, causing him to lose consciousness again. The suspect then left the location with the female in a vehicle and leaned out of the vehicle to take the victim's phone. Now Gould faces a couple of charges, including aggravated robbery. And we have new details of, of a story we first told you on the night beat last night. BCSO has found a truck driver accused of, listen to this, using a flatbed trailer as a battering ram on the highway. 30-year-old Yudi Aguilar is facing two felony counts for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and failure to stop and render aid causing bodily injury. The Bear County Sheriff says Aguilar was originally going to turn himself in after some encouragement from co-workers. Deputies say the whole thing has started as a road rage situation. Both drivers got out and got into a verbal confrontation. The sheriff says that's when Aguilar allegedly ran the victim over and took off. The man was able to take a picture of the truck before he got away, but he's still suffering from a shattered leg. 
This morning, the search continues for a woman who vanished over four months ago. Jordan Tompkins is one of the three people that has not been seen in the Lake Hills area that's just outside of Medina Lake. She was last seen wearing a black top and pink shoes, leaving the Medina Lake Country Club back in April. You're urged to call Bandera Sheriff's Office if you have any information about where she might be. Today is the last day of Uvalde's Palomino Festival and Rodeo. It's also the last big event before Uvalde students head back to class this Tuesday. The county fairplex was filled with carnival rides, food and rodeo fun. This year's event had a special theme of Uvalde, Uvalde Strong. Saturday started with a parade where the families of the 21 Robb Elementary School victims made a special float with their loved ones' names and faces proudly displayed. The board organizing Palomino Fest debated putting on the festival but decided for it because they could use the weekend to honor those who were killed and donate to those who were hurt. We decided that the $25,000 instead of going to the scholarships, it's going to go to the families of the uh, students that were injured. Now tonight is the final night of Palomino Fest. Gates open at 5 p.m. There will be a special tribute to the 21 Rob victims during the Los Palominos performance at 9 p.m. And on the night beat, we are taking a look back to walk out to a walkout that happened in Uvalde CISD in the 70s. I'm hoping that, that we can develop something that's going to be more permanent than what we did back in the 70s. Even though, like I said, <clears throat> I'm not complaining, and I think we did wonderful back in the 70s with what we had and for what, what we were doing. But I, I think we can do a much better job today. Abelardo Castillo is the only living non-student organizer of the walkout. He's been contacted by families and the community to help organize another movement. We'll have that story tonight on the Night Beat at 10. Well, topping your morning headlines, a major development in the search for, for a school teacher in Tennessee that has not been seen. Now, police say they found the car they believe was involved in the kidnapping. ABC's Mola Lenghi has the latest from Memphis. This morning, a breakthrough in the search for Memphis mom Eliza Fletcher. Police said they found the vehicle of interest and detained the man who was inside it. Eliza, nowhere to be found. It's now been a number of hours since they detained an individual that was in the car allegedly used in this abduction. I have real concerns about her well-being because it's just been too long. More than anything, we want to see Liza returned home safely. Her family pleading for someone to come forward, offering a $50,000 reward. We believe someone knows what happened and can help. ABC affiliate WATN confirming Fletcher is the granddaughter of a prominent businessman and philanthropist and the niece of the city's chief legal officer possible abduction earlier today for Ms. Liz Fletcher. The 34-year-old kindergarten teacher reported missing Friday after she did not return from an early morning run. Police saying a dark SUV approached her around 4.30 a.m. and forced her inside the car. Police seen collecting a laptop and garden shears while at her home Friday. Also towing a white wagoneer parked out front. Authorities saying they found her water bottle and cell phone near where she was reportedly abducted. Our whole church deeply loves the Fletcher family. Her church holding a vigil for Eliza. We are deeply pained and sorrowed by what's going on and we're praying for her safe return. 38-year-old Cleotha Abston has been arrested and charged with aggravated kidnapping. A second person has also been arrested, although they are not believed to be directly connected to this abduction. Multiple agencies are involved in this ongoing investigation, including the FBI. Mola Lange, ABC News, Memphis. Well, meanwhile, the Minnesota State Fair closed early Saturday after a shooting sent one person to the hospital. Hundreds of people were seen fleeing the midway after gunfire erupted. Police say one person was shot and was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Now, over in Mississippi, there is good news on the state's water crisis. In a Facebook post Saturday, city officials say most of Jackson's residents should have near normal water pressure. The city is still under a boil water notice, but the improved water pressure is an important step forward. Teams from Georgia and Florida are on site to help repair and restore some of the automated systems. Meanwhile, work continues to restore a few remaining pockets of low or no water pressure south of the city. 
Also in Mississippi, the man who allegedly set off an emergency scramble with a stolen plane is now behind bars. 29-year-old Corey Patterson is facing several criminal charges after police say he snatched a twin-engine plane and then threatened to intentionally crash it into a Walmart. Police negotiators eventually convinced him to crash land that plane, and he did so without any injuries. Now, over in Cape Canaveral, Florida, NASA isn't saying when they could try to launch their Artemis rocket after scrubbing Saturday's launch. Now, the crews uh, had been wrestling with a hydrogen leak from the moment they started Saturday's countdown. It's the second time NASA's uncrewed test flight to send the Orion space capsule around the moon and back has been called off. All right, it's 840 and 73 degrees. That's right, and still ahead on GMSA, a World War II hero in his 90s is still serving, but in a very different way. We'll tell you what he's up to in just a few minutes. And up next, if you're looking for a new fur baby, a new adoption special is offering heavy discounts for big dogs this weekend. How you can get involved next. And taking a look outside, San Antonio's looking beautiful. It's 73 degrees. Will we have some rain? We'll have that information coming up on GMSA. This morning on KSAT.com, San Antonio Pets Alive is offering discounts to anyone who wants to become new owners of a big dog this weekend. I have two big dogs. <laughs> love, love big dogs. They're Super special. Cute. Get this. It's called We Like Big Mutts. See yeah. what they did there? Yeah. All right. They are offering $10 adoptions for any dog weighing more than 35 pounds. This will take place at all San Antonio Pet Alive locations. To find out more on where the locations are, you can visit our website. Here's the thing. When you have a big dog, they you have a, part, you have a permanent partner for, oh. uh, for walks. So... And Highly yours recommend. are the cutest, Sarah, I have Thank to say. You. Yours too. <laughs> <laughs> well, this fall, the San Antonio Zoo wants you to check out the first ever Zoo Fest. It's happening at the Sunken Garden Theater on Saturday, October 22nd. Guests can expect music, dancing, food, drinks, VIP experiences, and admission to the San Antonio Zoo. We have more information about both these stories on our website, ksat.com. Okay. You know, the nice thing about not just big dogs, but the older dogs like that, too, when you adopt, you know, the puppies are real cute, and they got the puppy breath and all that, but you know exactly what you're going to be getting personality-wise. Right. Usually housebroken. Yes. They yep. can usually sit. Yep. <laughs> and they, I feel like, are a little more appreciative because they know that they've been rescued or saved. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. When they when they get yeah. that couch and they take over the couch, then they're after like, they've okay. Been in, after they've been in a shelter for right. so many years, you know, they're like, oh, I've made it in life. <laughs> they love you for so this it. is this is what it's like on this couch. So yeah, yeah. and then Please they make your way me. into the bed, and then they then the house is theirs. <laughs> but that's a great rate for eyes. Great deal though with the big dogs, ten bucks, and like you said, you got a walking partner, and with some of the younger ones, tennis ball in the backyard. Kids, dogs, everybody's going to sleep really good. So uh, speaking of really good, look at this picture. And we've been getting so many of these KSAC Connect pictures of these rain gauges out there in Live Oak. And as it says, it was just coming down consistently, which is oh, a beautiful thing. We will have a few more showers, a couple of thunderstorms around later on today. But... Uh, Probably not as widespread. Going to keep a lot of these clouds around, though, throughout the day. And so that's going to help with temperatures as far as keeping them down. Now, as far as rain right now, this is just a little bit of uh, kind of some cluttery type stuff. But then further on down here to the south, got some pretty good downpours coming down at the rate of about three inches per hour. So not the really, really, really heavy stuff. But the thing is, and as you put this into uh, motion on the loop here, right there in northeastern LaSalle County, they're not really moving all that much. So a lot of rain at times has fallen down here to the south. You want to watch out in some of the low lying areas, maybe a little bit of flooding. Then also right here, just to the west of 37, got some uh, pretty good downpours as well there in northeastern Live Oak County. So so just keep an eye out for some of these uh, throughout the next couple of hours because they are kind of holding in there fairly tough. And obviously that's the one thing that we're going to have to be dealing with today or on the lookout for today, I should say, is the uh, somewhat heavy downpours here and there. But here in town, we don't have anything showing up as of right now. Just a little bit of uh, some uh, kind of some clutter around the, the radar site right there. So 73 degrees here in town, upper 60s in parts of the hill country. And yes, it is humid out there. We've got dew points, especially around 
Stinson, as well as uh, Poteet 74. That's fog up your glasses kind of humidity, but these dew point temperatures are actually down compared to what they were yesterday morning when it was just a steam bath out there, and that helped to feed obviously some of those heavier downpours. So 20% chance of rain this morning, taking into account what's down to the south, and then maybe kind of a lull in the action, then start to pick back up again. But again, it's going to be fewer and a little bit further between than what we had around here yesterday. 30% chance for a shower or thunderstorm and 88 for a high temperature. So we will be five degrees below normal. Yesterday we did hit 93, it did pop up to 93 degrees. That is a normal high temperature this time of year. And as far as dew points though, well, the line kind of moved around on me a little bit, but dew points are gonna be staying up in the uh, 60s, upper 60s, low 70s today, which means it is going to be a very humid, very sultry day. 82 degrees, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 88 today. And if you got outdoor plans today, got outdoor plans tomorrow, wouldn't change them at all. Just kind of keep an eye on the radar. Just uh, download the app. Easiest thing to do. And one or two of those showers and thunderstorms out there, like I said, just a 30% chance. And that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. 90 for a high temperature, the unofficial end of summer. And then the next okay chance of rain, really, you know, each and every day if there's a stray shower popping up here and there, you can't be 100% ruled out, but 20% chance of a shower or two on Wednesday. And then after that, pretty much just a lot of sunshine mixed in with the couple of clouds here and there and mid low to mid 90s. What's the official the start day of fall? It is the 22nd of September. So we're still, um, what, two weeks away from that? Two, almost three weeks away from the official start of fall. Okay, so I can start busting out the sweaters in 80 degrees when? And this time. <laughs> So, How long have you lived here to know when to A girl can dream, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. You can take off the sweater. It's going to be hot. But... <laughs> All right. It's 8.50 and 73 degrees. Now, here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow on GMSA. You'll never make me put this to my head again, my mom said as she held the gun up in front of me. This is an example of the length she was willing to go in order to cause emotional damage despite my undying love for her. One of my favorite candies. From homeless to hero, tomorrow on GMSA, we'll introduce you to a veteran who is doing great things despite the odds being stacked against her. You don't want to miss this incredible story. This morning, a 94-year-old uh, war veteran has continued to serve others for the past 32 years. He welcomes patients at Shriners Children's Hospital in St. Louis. Love this story. Since Carl Hall's retirement in, the in 1990, he's dedicated his time to making children smile. So Carl is well known at the hospital. To many, he's considered a hero for treating everyone like family. Carl also finds joy in doing the simple things like handing out toys to kids. He loves the patients and his biggest joy is seeing the patients smile when he gives them a gift and talk to them, have a conversation about how special Shriners is to them. So there he is. Carl says he plans to help and volunteer at Shriners Hospital as long as he can. You go, Carl. Thank you for your service, Carl. And before we go, a story that's getting some positive traction on social media. They may not be as stubborn as mules, but some goats in Massachusetts, they refuse to get off a busy road. So take a look. Responding police officers worked to round them up without much luck until one of them had an idea, luring them in with a pack of McDonald's <laughs> French fries. Those seem to do the trick as officers used the fries to get the goats to safety. It's not exactly known how the goats got out, on or onto the road or where they even ended up. But I mean, I think fries would work for me too. Oh, Mike. maybe the hash browns. I love hash browns. <laughs> Both, yes. Yeah. Still a few showers <laughs> well down there in uh, LaSalle, McMullen counties. Uh, just keep an eye out for uh, some of those heavier downpours, but it's not anything too extreme right now. 74 degrees now here in town. And throughout the day, we're going to make it up to 88. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Jonathan. So oh. great to have you. Always happy to be weekend. here, Sarah. Hope everyone has a great Sunday.